All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you are watching AM4 Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series that I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program all their Fractal Audio products, including the XFX3, the FM9, the FM3, and in this case, the brand new AM4 Amp Modeler. So a little about myself, once again, my name is Rosh, and uh, I build and program guitar rigs out here in the LA area as well as online and I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and show some tips and tricks on how to program all their Fractal audio products. So my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, A Perfect Circle, and more. And so Fractal has done it again. Uh, they have uh, recently released the AM4 amp modeler and it's uh, about time that I start doing some, tutor uh, some tutorials for this. So this is going to be, again, just like my other basic series for dealing with the FM3, the AxeFX3, and the FM9. I want to give a, you know, comprehensive, right from, you know, back to basics, right from the beginning. You just bought the AM4 and just pulled it out of the box. And then um, you're just trying to understand how to use it. And I'm going to show some tips and tricks on how to do that, uh, both using the front panel as well as AM4 edit. So without further ado, let's get started with this tutorial. So assuming you just pulled the AM4 out of the box, powered it up, and plugged everything in, this is what you're going to be presented with, okay? So the first thing I want to address is right here, at, whenever you boot up the AM4, you're going to see this uh, display that says loading cabs. So if you uh, reference the manual, it just takes a couple minutes for the cabinets to load, but as you can hear, you know, the first preset that the AM4 loads on is going to work just as normal. So as you can see, after a couple minutes, the uh loading cabs disappears and you're good to go even if the loading cabs is happening for a couple minutes as you boot up you can just kind of ignore that for the moment and you know it's not anything to be concerned about it just uh whenever you boot up the unit that's what's going to happen okay so in the uh if you're looking at the am4 in the right hand side that's where your uh, guitar input is going to be and right now what i'm currently doing is i'm plugging an ernie ball cable and uh, this is an Ernie Ball headphone and uh, instrument cable combo. And in the headphone jack right here, uh, I have the other side of the cable so I can just, you know, plug in my in-ears and listen to the unit itself. So let's go over some of the basics of what you do now, okay? So the first thing that you want to get familiar with is all the different gig modes. Assuming that your AM4 is just straight out of the box, one of the things that you just should get familiar with is how to navigate the menus uh, with the switches in gig mode. So the first thing that we're going to do is if you press down uh, buttons one and two, the, both those foot switches, it's going to present you with the options to either select the presets, the scenes, the effects, the tuner, and the ammo. And I'll go over all these in you know a little more in-depth as these uh, tutorials go on. But again, this is like the first, you know, just quick start getting started with the AM4. So the first mode that we all want to get familiar with is the preset mode. So we're going to press that and then now you can see that all the foot switches are green. So these give you access to the first four presets of the unit as you can see. So for example if we do the AM4 gig rig this is going to be the first preset and right now I'm just playing the Les Paul and then I'm going to go over some of the other basics in just a moment. And then so here's the second preset. And then third preset, fourth preset, and we're turning back to the first preset. Now, within each preset, there are also four scenes. So if we go into this mode again by hitting the first two foot switches together, and now you can go to the scenes of this uh, particular preset. So we again are in the first preset where it says A1 right there. But now we are in scene mode. So this gives you access to the four scenes within the preset. So this gig rig preset that is a default factory preset is really useful for people just starting out. Um, basically in scenes mode, you get access to four different scenes. And so you're gonna have a clean scene, a push AC scene, a jump plexi scene, and then a two C plus hot lead scene. So again, here's the clean. And if we hit the second foot switch, we go into the AC. And then in hitting the third foot switch, we get the jump plexi. And then last, this is going to be the hot lead sound. 
Okay. So again, going into gig mode. Now we have the next layer down, which is going to be the effects. And so whatever scene you're in, now you can turn on and off effects at will. So for example, if I'm in scene four, which is the hot lead sound, and I don't want to use the drive, I can bypass that, and then now the drive is off. Versus it being on. Now, by hitting this one with the amp scene, again, this is going to actually turn on the boost, which is going to just increase the volume of the amp by about 3 dB if you're using the defaults. And then if you turn the boost off again, as you can see, the LED turns white, so it's saying boost is on versus the boost is off. So for example, if we have this as our volume, and then we turn the boost on, as you can hear, it's about 3 dB louder. So as we go through each of this, now we can bypass the delay, and then we can of course bypass the reverb, or turn the delay back on or the reverb back on. So again, we're going to go back into gig mode. And then now in the fourth one, we have our tuner. So by default, the tuner is still going to be active, but you're still going to hear audio. So if you actually want to mute the tuner, you're going to press the mute switch, which is tied to button three. So now you can tune. And then of course, if you want to have audio again, you can turn that back on and it still shows you the tuner. And the reason why we use this particular screen is so that you also have access to the tap tempo. So as you tap through the tempo, you can lower the tempo. Now you may not hear the delays changing time because the delays aren't, you know, in time with the tap tempo, but if you do have time-based effects that you want to make sure that there are at a specific tempo, this is the, the screen where you're going to access all that. So again, let's go back to gig mode and then we're going to go back to presets. Okay. So now you can also navigate through the presets, the scenes and the effects using the select knob. So for example, if I turn the, the select knob, you can see I'm going through each of the three modes. Um, and so for example, if I want to be in preset mode, I can just Make sure that the blue line is highlighting the preset, which is the first line. And then again, I have access to the presets in this unit. And if I want to have access to the scenes within the preset, then I select the second line and you can see I have access to all the scenes. And of course, if I want to select any of the effects, now I'm in effects mode because I am selecting the third line. And of course I can turn on and off effects, but of course, Keep in mind that if you press the amp, you are turning the boost on or off, which I'll, again, I will kind of cover in the future. This is just, you know, quick start guide just to get in and out of all the sounds that are on here by default, assuming you just like pulled it out of the box or something. So let's go back to preset mode. Now, if you want to have access to some of the other presets that are in further banks, the outside buttons, switches one and switch four are going to bank up and down. So for example, if I press and hold switch four, I'm going to go to the next bank. And you see I'm in bank B now. And of course, the, this bank has these four presets that are in there. So for example, preset one in bank B is the 5153 stealths. Preset two is the 6160. Preset three in bank B is the AC class 30. And in preset four is the AC 20. And again, if I wanna to go to the third bank, which is gonna be bank C, I have access to those four presets and so on and so forth. Now, the reverse is also the same. So if you press and hold switch one, it's going to go up the banks, bank to back to bank A. And now again, you have access to the presets in bank B. So again, you can hold either switch one or switch four to go bank up and down in presets. So keep in mind that if you are on some of the other modes, so for example, you, you can see that if I am in the scenes mode and I still hold switch four, all I'm doing now is going up one preset at a time instead of one bank at a time. So again, please note that you are staying still in bank A, but now this time you're going up and down different presets. Now this can be really useful 
for example, if you are using just one specific, you know, a couple presets within a bank, but you want to go quickly between them and you don't want to have to go to, for example, presets mode and then start banking, bank, banking up and down through the banks, that's a really useful way to get to it. So again, to cover that, if you are in scenes mode and you want to go up and down through the presets within the bank, so again, I am on, on preset three in bank A, let's say I want to go back to preset two in bank A, again, from scenes mode, I can hold down switch one, and then now I'm in scene, or I'm sorry, in preset two, and then again, if I want to go back to the preset one within this bank, that's how you can do it. You're just going up and down three different presets to do using these hold functions. So lastly, let's go back to the presets mode. Again, I'm using the select, but of course you can use the, uh, you know, the gig mode. What, you, what we want to do is now that we have plugged in, we're getting some sound, and then we're in this mode, you may notice that there is going to be a clipping light. Now, I have a, I'm playing a Les Paul. I got pretty hot pickups on this one. So I felt like this was going to be very useful to kind of demonstrate this. So again, depending on the type of guitar you play and then, you know, what type of guitar player you are, if you strike the strings really hard, you may get this input clipping right here at the top. So as you can see, it says some input clipping right there. So what you want to do is to adjust the uh, AD conversion in this unit to the guitar uh, that you're playing. Now, you don't need to go crazy and, you know, do this every single time for every single guitar. Most of the time, if you set the input settings correctly for the guitar with the, you know, maybe the most, the hottest pickups that you have, you should be fine with using any other pickups. So for example, uh, since I'm using the bridge pickup on my Les Paul with pretty hot pickups, uh, I want to adjust the AM4 to make sure that this is going to be there and to get rid of that in one clipping. So what we're going to do is the enter and exit buttons. When you press them together, they are going to be go into the setup menu. So I'm going to press both of these. And then what you'll see is you may not see this page initially because you may show up on some of these other pages that are in here. So what you want to do is use these page left and page right buttons in the second row to go to the first slot right there in the setup audio. And you can see that you're looking for input pad. Now, the input pad is basically padding down the signal that's coming from your guitar and then making it up on the back end after the input. All you're doing is converting the uh, audio to ones and zeros that now live in the digital world. So you have a lot of different options. So for example, you can pad it by 12, 18, six, or zero. So depending on where, what, you know, what type of guitar you have, you may want to adjust this so that you don't get that input clipping. So for example, you can see this input meter, again, bridge pickup on the Les Paul. You can see I'm going into the clipping right there. So I'm going to turn that up to, neg uh, to 6 dB. So again, we're padding down the input signal by 6 decibels. And you can still see I'm clipping. So I'm going to turn that up to 12. And again, still clipping. So I'm going to turn that up to 18. And now, as you can see, the clipping is going to go away. And then we're going to keep it there. What, you, there's no need to save anything. You don't need to do anything other than just hit exit, and then now you're good to go. So, as you can see, no more clipping, and then you're good to you know you mess around with some of the other presets. So I think that's plenty to cover for just like a quick start guide on the AM4 for this time being. So again, just assuming you just pull the AM4 out of the box and you're just trying to get going really quickly. These are the steps that you would just kind of want to get familiar with. Again, the gig mode um, and then using the select knob and of course, making sure that the input from your guitar is in a good spot. All right, so again, if you guys need any help uh, programming any of your fractal units, you can of course use the link in the description below. There is a Calendly link there where you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I can help you program your AM4 or any other fractal product or any other modeler remotely via Zoom. And um, feel free to check out some of the other YouTube videos on this channel to uh, help uh, show some of my, you know, approaches to programming all the fractal products to get the best tone and, uh, you know, best functionality for your unit. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.